Hello, this is Dan Winter. I'm here with Bill Donovan and Paul Harris, and we're working with Roger Green. And this message is about an amazing breakthrough healing energy technology, which the planet definitely and desperately needs. The technology is essentially incredibly simple and beautiful. It is absolutely possible to make a regenerative field. It's real. It can, you've seen it in all the movies, every Star Trek, Star, you've all seen the gadgets, and you always dreamed of it, but the fact is it's real, and we're here to tell you about it and ask for your support. It's very simple. Short history. The short history, and you should read about it yourself, it's called the Priory device, P-R-I-O-R-E, Priory technology, and at first it was famous in France. It was so uh, powerful here in France that the French government itself documented thousands of cases of cancer, absolutely healed, remission, incredible, I mean, almost magical, unbelievable healing. It was so powerful that every healing technology in France was suddenly distracted to study this. And obviously there was the same and usual controversy. If we can't understand how it works and why it works, you know, it, it must be evil and therefore the, the controversy was such that eventually, of course, it was squelched, as you can imagine. The good news is, newly, now, we understand the physics in a new and dramatic way, and we're ready and prepared to build it. So I'm just going to summarize brief, briefly, and then I'm going to hand it over to Bill, who's an expert on the deep physics, and Paul, who's hands-on in building and with the RF and the plasma work. So, short summary. Pure principle of science the one area where regenerative, which is called self-organizing or negentropic fields have been made in physics, well known, well documented, is phase conjugate optics. And what phase conjugation may, means, is, as we say, is, for example, with the lasers in optics, the path of the beam enters what we call two pine cones kissing noses, and where they converge, they create a place of negentropy, of suction, of implosion. And in optics, that is well known to be negentropic and self-organizing. The point is we now know that phase conjugation, this self-organizing phenomenon, can be applied to dielectrics, basically spark gaps, capacitance, phase conjugate magnetics, and you can do rapid phase conjugation in the noble gas tubes, which is what Priory was using. And the other thing that's so absolutely cool, and it's Bill here that helped me understand this, and he'll speak about it in a minute, was that when you study the literature, of course, you've got these noble gases in the tubes. We know noble gases can be what's called a conjugator, which means can kind of implode in, in the optical spectrum and in the uh, electromagnetic high frequencies. But around the tube, you had these coils, it, it, or a big coil, in the Priory device, and there's a record of the frequencies that Priory put in those coils. And if you dig out that record, this is, this is what got me kicked on this phenomenon. You dig out the record of those frequencies, it's, it's the low frequencies, it's like on the order of zero to 600 hertz. But there's a frequency cascade in there. And you see, I've been working for years on this idea that all self-organization in nature, which I call restored centripetal forces, is based on one simple uh, wave physics and frequency signature, and Bill has been helping me on this, and it is basically this. If you take the Planck length and the Planck time constant, and you do exact whole number powers of golden ratio times that, you know, remember Planck length and time are a musical key signature of all of nature and all of physics, right? Every wave that physics has ever measured is, fits into that length, Planck length and time. So multiply by powers of golden ratio, and you get, you get the radii of hydrogen. You get the exact two frequencies which motorize photosynthesis. Exactly. Read it in it. You'll read it on our websites. And, and by the way, I first got excited when I found out that Elizabeth Rauscher, one of the world's most famous physicists and our old friend, she had found out a certain series of magnetic frequencies which she had FDA studies, magnetic harmonic cascades, dramatic pain reduction. And guess what? This, you know, we later discovered this exact same frequency series. So anyway, we tested that on Priory and, you know, it was like made my year when Bill helped me figure out that Priory's harmonic series was right on that. 
So the point is we now understand the principle behind Priory, which they did not understand at that time. So we've been on this dream for some years now, many contacts and friends, leading people in France who had contact with the literature. We've been assembling the hardware. We've got the amp some of the amplifiers now. Paul is the genius on the plasma tubes and the uh, pl plasma connections and some of the RF. And Bill has really been understanding the, the physics, the equations. For example, and, and Bill will speak in a minute. I'm going to give the mic to him right now. But Bill helped me understand there's a guy named Guy Oblinsky, who's a friend of ours, friend of Roger and Bill and myself. Actually, I bought my first polygraph from him 30 years ago, amazing guy. And uh, Guy Oblinsky, somewhat famous there, up there, uh, upstate New York, uh, Slotesburg area. He has, basically, you, you pay your money and you go in and you get younger. <laughs> and it's an electric field. And it, you should check it out, it's pretty cool. And it's related to something called the Lakovsky Oscillator. Turns out, the Lakovsky Oscillator is basically a spark gap that makes a harmonic series in the frequency signature of, guess what, just what we just talked about. But that device is capacitive and electric. It's excellent, it's worth pursuing, it's useful, and there is so much more. Because he is doing the phase conjugation in a certain bandwidth, you could call electrostatic capacitive, however, when you add the magnetic and the optical, the higher frequencies, in the optics, and you phase conjugate broad spectrally the power of that to heal. It is an understanding that our planet needs. It doesn't matter whose name we give to this technology, but the pure principle of understanding what makes the body centripetal, therefore self-healing, must be taught. So we urge you to help support us develop this Priory technology. And now I'm going to pass the microphone on to Bill and Paul. Yeah, Bill, appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. comments. Mm -hmm. Okay, so essentially how it works is that matter has a memory and that is uh, any matter and one of the things that Priori found is that you can put a, a rusted piece of metal into the machine and the rust will disappear. So It returns back to its near past. <laughs> right, right. It uh, goes from entropy to negentropy from order, from disorder to order and uh, since matter does have a memory to it, all you have to do is cause it to remember its previous healthy state and it will return to that. Now what Bearden also mentioned is that you can put a matrix on top of that so that it doesn't return to the state that you had in the future. And if, for example, if you had a congenital illness that was genetic in nature, then you can actually change that path in time so that you never go back to that. For example, let's say you had a congenital uh, heart defect that would uh, show up at around age 28 and you back them up to age 25. Well then, if you don't do this in three years, then of course the thing comes back. Now normally for the pharmaceutical industry, this would be a boon. We don't want to do this. We want to remain ethical. So what we do is we change that path. We, uh, we actually correct it with a, a substitute matrix on top of it so that when that individual comes back to age 28, then that congenital defect is no longer there. It's part of what in physics they really discovered in optics is that when you do time reversal, and I know it sounds like magic, but it's serious physics, when in physics you do time reversal, you can only go back to a past to a state of more order. Right. That's part of yeah. what's behind what Bill is right. saying. That, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the other thing. Pepper did a lot of work on that. This is in the hardcore scientific literature. It's not something that somebody just conjured up. There's 20 years of work on this. To conjure, to conjugate. <laughs> right. So uh, this is something with a, a very... Uh, robust background and it was first seen in though the Russians first discovered this and they knew about it in the optical realm they didn't know if the West knew about it in the lower frequency realm you see this is uh, at a very very low amplitude in the optical realm so they just wanted to see if we knew something was funny was going on and they showed how you could take the image of a cat and put it through frosted glass where it jumbles up the wave fronts 
and creates you know, decoherence, entropy, that sort of thing. And then you pass it through a phase conjugate mirror, and then the image of the cat comes back, it, completely it, crisp and clear. It reassembles into its previous state of order. Right. And so that's, this is the essence of behind regenerative technologies in general. Right. And the point is, this is the first time in physics outside of military and government with a real humanitarian goal mm -hmm. to apply this to healing. And it's about time. That's mm -hmm. really where it is. Right. Now, uh, the other thing is that uh, earlier we thought that uh, these systems only applied in the, the radio frequency realm. However, and what was recently found is that when they put a human body in complete darkness with photomultiplier tubes, the body will glow in the UV spectrum. And every one of those photons are coming out from inside the tissues. Bearden calls this the porthole concept. So that uh, even if uh, my, uh, an ultraviolet photons coming out from the bone marrow, it can actually be phase conjugated and fed back in, which means that it won't miss a thing. A mirror that makes you younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So not only does it reverse disease and back to order, but it can reverse aging back to a younger state. So it's just we owe it to ourselves as a species to actually bravely pioneer this work because behind it is the principle of life itself. Life itself self-organizes. Life is negentropic. We must enact the physics. So we assemble people like Bill here who's been studying it from the electrical engineering point, probably the leader on the planet in the, in the footsteps of Bearden and Tesla. And then finally here we have Paul. Paul's expertise is hands-on. He has immense expertise in assembling plasma tubes, and he was a turning point in our recent RF experience. We have to put radio frequencies into plasma tubes and assemble this very accurately. And Paul also is our lead alchemist. So he might just want to comment briefly on how we're assembling the hardware and material to proceed, briefly, if you wish. Okay. Um, yeah, something people might be familiar with, uh, especially in America, is a medical doctor in the early 1900s, uh, Dr. Royal Raymond Reif, who had a similar device. Uh, however, the Prairie uh, had a much more advanced technology getting into time reversal waves and everything, as mm -hmm. Bill was discussing. But uh, a lot of people are familiar today with Royal Reif, so you could kind of picture it as a, a glorified Reif machine with uh, a lot of extra added features and, and basically what what wife was doing was simply stimulating uh, a noble gas inside of a tube to create a plasma that emitted uh, had a longitudinal wave up and down the tube of the plasma and that he found a lot of healing qualities but never understood exactly what was going on so and the priori device that you can kind of look at it like a rife machine times you know, a thousand basically, because it's actually going into the time domains and, and, and healing the body from its initial memory, cellular memory. So what you could uh, kind of imagine is, you know, there's a lot of technology out on the market today where people are pushing various different Rife machines, but nobody today really has a clue how Rife was originally doing it. And what we have is a really advanced understanding of how Prairie was uh, creating this device, and, and we're going to uh, recreate it, and that's why we're looking for your support. And create the nice version. Yeah. Uh, exactly. It's going to be the Prairie uh, 2.0. And be because when you really understand the physics, you can use the technology in a such a self-empowered way. Rife was essentially producing a certain frequency signature which would invert the frequencies of disease in the high frequency spectrum. He was using birefringence quartz z-axis. We know all about that mm -hmm. physics. Mm -hmm. But when you take that to its climax condition, the frequency signature that actually becomes centripetal, negentropic, converges and self-regenerative, that's exactly the point. That's where Priory was going. Right. And so if we want to take healing technologies to their field effect limit, Prior is a beautiful gateway. So thank you everyone for supporting this project. Thank you Roger for helping bring this to the world. And we're asking for the right team to come together on the business and finance side. Actually, there's so much wonderful things happening. We see it happening already. On the technical side and the hardware side, we're just raring to go and happy to work with you. So thank you very much. Thanks Bill and Paul and Roger. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, about time reversal. So. It's a controversial subject. Now, it doesn't mean that with time reversal, you're taking the body and putting it back in time. 
In fact, uh, that's uh, very, very difficult to do, especially with the power levels that we have. Uh, essentially, what we're talking about is triggering the memory that matter has, and it, it remembers its previous state. So what you're doing is you're causing the body to go back to a previous state, to remember what that state was. Of increased order. Right? Of increased order. Yeah. So you're not moving anything backward in time. What you're doing is you're triggering this memory that matter has. Yeah, I can add to that actually. Yeah, go ahead. Um, biologically, you can look at it um, with cellular memory. When you get an injury and you have a right. scar, it's the new cells that reproduce. You're continuously reproducing new cells all the time, but those cells contain a cellular memory and they emulate the cells that they're growing on top of. That's why your scar remains. So you could look at it in this way where you're, you're supplying the new cells that are going to have that memory erased and they'll have their initial uh, memory restored. Right. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and if you were to model that in wave mechanics, there is a tree structure between when the cell was at its maximum order and where it is now. And the concept here is that tree structure has a geometry called phase conjugate, which means the, back, the path back to the place of maximum order is in part a path back to a place of maximum spin density. And to return to that place of maximum order is also a phase conjugate, or to say implosive or negentropic path. So it's really imploding back to max order is mm -hmm. almost a better term than time reversal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a better yeah. definition. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So it's real. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm.